Welcome to Sewing 101. So fourth grade, this is going to be your introduction. I will show you this in class as well. So this is just your reminder video so that you can play and pause and rewind if you need to. Just a reminder of your materials, you're gonna need one five inch by 10 inch piece of fabric. Now this one has a reclaimed edge, so I'll tell you how to deal with that in a minute. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a piece of thread, and I will have these back on the counter and show you how to do that. And you're going to have it 18 inches times two. So wrap it around the end of your ruler and multiply that by two. So my ruler's a little bit long for the camera, so I will show this in class as well. But you're gonna run that thread down one side of the ruler, up the back side of the ruler, and then give it maybe a good hand width beyond that and that's about all you'll need. If you do any longer than that, then it'll get tangled, so you don't want to go too long. So you're going to need one little thread. I'm going to use white so the camera can pick it up. Usually if you have black fabric, you want a dark thread, but since I'm showing this on camera, I'm just going to use a white thread. You're going to need a needle, and beyond that, you're going to need some straight pins. So right here in this box, I have straight pins, and I'm going to zoom in for a minute and tell you the difference, because there is a difference. When you're talking to me, don't forget, and I will show you this again in class, you have two types of sharp objects that I'm going to be handing you. This is a pin. A pin has a flat head on it, so this is to keep things held together. And then you have your needle, which is your, your working tool. And your working tool will have an eye in it, so it will have a gap, a hole, where the thread is going to sit. So in order to do this project, we are making corn bags. So this is going to be your corn bag. It is filled literally with corn. Same thing you would feed a goat or a cow. That's what's in the middle of this corn bag. And you can actually put these in the freezer or in the microwave. They will heat up or cool down. They can be a little ice pack or they can be a little heat pack. Depends on what you want. Don't microwave them for more than a minute at a time or else it might get too hot. And if it gets too hot, sometimes that can damage the corn inside. So just a minute on high. That's all you need. So in order to get that, though, we have to get our pillow made. And when you're sewing, first things first, you've got to thread your needle. So get that nice long thread. Try not to tangle it too much. The more you tangle it, the harder it is to do. But you're going to take that little thread. You're going to put it through the eye of your needle. Your eye is pretty big on these needles, so it shouldn't be too hard. And you're going to double it. So we are going to be sewing with a doubled thread. So you're going to pull that thread all the way until the two tails meet. This gives you double the strength of thread. Don't do it three times or four times because then that causes more problems than it solves because it starts to tangle. So with your thread, both ends matched up. On the other end of the loop, your needle is put into your thread. So it is going to be tied at the end. If you don't do that, your needle can fall off. So once through the loop, if you're not sure how to do this, easy way to do it, you loop it. Go over top of the string, around, up through the middle, and then a little trick to make sure that you're tying your knot in the same place. If you have a friend, hold it, and then you pull the tail two ends. I'm holding the knot, which is, it's really, really teeny, but it's right there. I'll take a marker belt dot. Hang on. Make a little pink marker dot where that knot is so you can see it. It is very, very tiny. So that little pink spot is where the knot is. You probably can't even see it on camera. That little tiny piece. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to pinch that knot. Maybe have a friend help you. Pull the two tails, and it will trail right up into the knot. If it doesn't, and it didn't with mine because I let go too soon, just do it one more time. You're trying to get it so that it won't pull through the fabric to get it big enough that you aren't going to pull it the whole way through. Okay, now I've got a double knot. All right. So in order to start this process, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Remember I showed you yesterday, or today, I guess technically, you're going to fold this now right side in, the side that's the nice side that goes inside of your little corn bag. This little reclaimed edge, I don't want this white to show, so I'm just going to match it up to the colored edge. You can cut that off if you want to. I'm just going to leave it because really it doesn't hurt a thing. So I'm going to match these up, get them as close as you can. You're going to take your pin, you punch it through, wrap it around the end, 
and then punch it through again. So this is going to hold things together. You want to have your pins in there. I'm going to speed up this process a little bit because by now I should have showed you what to do with this. Even on the folded edge, make sure it's nice and smooth, as smooth as you can get it. Punch it all the way through, wrap it around the end of that point, and then push it through again. So you're just getting it to stay in place, otherwise it will wiggle and be all over the place. You're going to put two marker pins in. These marker pins are going to show where you're going to leave that opening I talked about. So it doesn't matter how big they are, I just happened to grab two big ones. Put one pin in. This is where we're going to start sewing. You're going to come around the edge, and then you're going to stop, let's see, about, let's say, three fingers worth. So right about there. So in between here and here, I'm going to leave an opening. All right. So I'm going to take my thread just about maybe a half an inch off the edge. Don't go too crazy. The more you take up the space, the less you're going to have for the corn inside. And then your stitches are going to run right along the edge, not really on the edge, like about a half an inch. So pull the whole way out, put the whole way in. So this is a back and forth motion. So I'm going to try and get that on camera. So pull all of that thread through. And then since you came up through the bottom here, you're going to go back down. Pull all the way through. Make sure that whole loop is out there. Punch through again. All the way up. Now see, it got tangled around here. So rather than keeping on yanking, I'm going to solve that problem before it ties itself into a knot. Pull that up. Now if you pull too hard, it's going to bunch. So if you do that, it's either going to pull all the way out, which you saw there, so take that, and instead you're going to tie one more knot. So if it's going to pull out, just wrap it around. Pull it nice and tight. Wrap it around. Pull it nice and tight. That way it won't pull out again, just to make sure. And I'm going to try that one more time. So down, all the way through. It got tangled, so I'm going to catch this. Get it uncaught. Pull it all the way through. Okay, again, it's caught. So I'm just going to uncatch it. One more time. It's about paying attention to the thread itself. If you don't pay attention to what the thread's doing, it can make a mess. Okay, so now you're going to do an up and down. So up and down. Now I have kids who try and get through this really quick and they'll try and make really big stitches. Here's the problem with that. Your stitches are the things that keep the things inside the pillow inside the pillow. So when you're making big stitches, your stitches should not be, let me get zoomed in here. You guys can see my stitches here. They look huge, but look at the size of my finger. They're tiny, tiny. If a piece of corn can get through your stitch, if your stitch is bigger than your piece of corn, the corn is going to fall through your pillow and come out. So you got to make those stitches smaller than the piece of corn on the smallest side. So right now, this gap in between here and here, this space, there's a stitch on the other side of the fabric that is smaller than the piece of corn. If I make a stitch, and I'll do this wrong on purpose, If I make a stitch that big, that corn might fall through my pillow and now it won't do what it's supposed to do. It won't keep that corn in. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to back stitch, which means to go backwards to fix that. You guys don't have to do that if you don't need to. I'm going to come back up. So to change direction, instead of, now this looks like a mess, but I did that on purpose, remember, to fill that in. So I'm going to come back up through this hole. So to turn a corner, all you have to do to turn a corner is stop sewing in the direction you were going. So in order to do this, I'm going to come this way and just change my direction. So sewing this way, coming up, maybe make sure you're paying attention to how much of a space there is over the top and under. Down, I don't have to worry about that pin because I'm not on a machine, so I can avoid this pin. As you come up, you can also take those out and slide them out if they're in your way. Now I'm getting a tangle, so I want to get that tangle evened out, so I'm going to pull. 
so my threads are even and then pull out. The other thing I can do is I can use my finger to kind of slide that extra thread out and it will chase it up towards the needle. And I will come through this part with you. So I'm going to pause my recording. I think. No, actually, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Get this. You guys can work along with me if you want. The video, you should, should pause. You should not just watch this. You should pause and do this as the video is showing because I would have shown you this in class already. Don't pull so hard. See how it's starting to pucker? It's starting to gather there. Get laid bug straightened out. It means I pulled too hard, so you can take that and you can smooth it out a little bit. But it's going to be very important not to let it pucker. And I'll show you what I mean by pucker here in a second. Okay, now if when you get good at this, when you get comfortable with this, you can do a few stitches at a time. So if you want to speed yourself up, don't make bigger stitches, just make more of them. So up and down, up and down, down, up, down, up. Now don't go too far because it gets hard to pull through. But hold your hold your thread on one corner right here. And then I'm going to pull away from that thread. So holding it helps me to not let it pucker. So I'm just going to very carefully pull this the whole way through until it's nice and snug on my fabric. And then I'm going to do it again. So you're going to chase the whole edge until you get back to that marker point that you left with the pins. So I'm going to keep going with this. Up and down and up and down. That way you can guys can work with me. You probably are falling behind a little bit. Remember, I've practiced this a lot. I've done this a lot. So if you need to pause the video, it's okay to do that. Okay, now I've got to change direction. So if I need to, I can flip this over. And that's where my thread came out. So I want to make sure I don't go past that or else there'll be a hole. So down. I'm just going to change my direction. You can turn these as many times as you need to to make it comfy for you. Up, down up, down, up. And if you want to check it, you can pull it out. You can see what the spacing is. I'm almost there. Okay, don't want to make it pucker. Almost finished. So down, so I came up through. I'm going to go back down, up, down, up. Remember, always making these smaller than the kernel of corn because if it's bigger, they will fall out, trust me, they will. I know you don't think so, but they will. Down. Pull that through. Making sure I don't do that. See how that puckered? I pulled too hard, so I'm just going to very carefully ease that out. Whoops, I think I broke my thread. I did, darn it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this was actually a good learning moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off very briefly. I can. There we go. I'm actually going to use this and I'm just going to tie a knot. So if your thread ends up being too small, for some reason your thread was not the length it should have been, if you can tie a knot. Now this is too short for me to put it on my needle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that needle to grab it under the loop so I can tie my knot, just like the first part of your tying your shoes. So over the top of that, so that means I've got to pull that underneath and through the loop. If you break your thread or if you are having a hard time with that, let me know and I can help you if you're having trouble. But really, all you're trying to do is make a knot, a knot that will stay. This knot is not ready to stay yet because it's already taking itself out. So you go through that and pull that through the loop. Let's see if I can make it to stay that way. Like a big mess. There's one tail. This should make a knot that will stay now. It's tiny, it's hard to see. Here we go. Alright, pull that tight. Alright, that looks like a knot that will stay. It's not going to slide out, it's not going to untie itself. So since that's going to be inside pill, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so that leaves me with a little bit of a problem. How do I fix this? Well, I'm just going to put my thread back on. If you need new thread, you can always do this. So if your thread adds up too short, you can always just re-thread it with a new thread. 
get it back in there. You're still going to need a knot on the end, so let's dive back in here. Oops, went right through. See, that's what happens when you don't tie a knot. I pulled too hard and my thread broke. Jeez Louise. All right, so I'm going to wrap it around the needle. So it's the same thing as making a loop and going through the middle of it. And I'm going to chase it down that way. So around. Tie it. Okay, so now I have a nice sturdy knot. So I'm going to keep going where I was. So I'm just going to start. doesn't matter because I just tied a new fresh knot. So down. Turn this. I know it's probably a little bit dizzying because I keep moving it. All right, so I came down through the fabric, so that means my next move is up. And then I'm going to keep going. So let's see if I can speed this up a little bit. I didn't intend to take this long, but, you know, things happen. Got to be patient. Not everything goes our way all the time. It's a learning process. There we go. I'm going to pull my thread too tight again. That would not be helpful. All right, now we're on a roll. Getting through both layers of fabric. If you only catch one, it's gonna make a hole that the cordon can get out of, so you wanna make sure you punch in through both sides. This is called a running stitch. So if you imagine that somebody had mud on their shoes and they were leaving footprints, it's footstep, 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 footstep. So it's a running stitch. So if you can imagine footprints, that's what helps me to remember what that's called. All right, one more stitch, there we go. All right, now I know I am going to run out of thread again. These little buggers, these don't matter because they are just falling off. And that will take care of it when we sew it together. Okay, so I came up through the side, so I'm gonna keep going. Now my marker pin is right here. The two that I've left for the opening are right here. So I have one more side to do and just this little bit. And I know I don't have enough thread for that, so I'm going to have to change my thread here in a minute. Making sure my gaps are not bigger than a kernel of corn, so that I do not lose anything that's inside of it. Smoothing that out. I can take this pin out and put it into the box. Please don't just leave them on the table. All right, now I'm getting to a point now where I have to change my thread just because it's getting too short. So I am going to... Do one last little loop, and I need to leave enough of it that I have enough room to tie it. So the easiest way to tie it, because in this project it doesn't matter, is to make a loop around the edge, and then see if you can get your needle through that loop. I might not have left enough. There we go. And then one more time, I'm going to go underneath that little bridge I just made, and get my needle through that loop tie it off. Alright, it's puckering a little bit, but I can live with that. Alright, a little snip, make sure you leave a little bit of a tail so it doesn't untie itself. And then I need some more thread. I'm not going to need a lot because I only need to go from here to here. So I am not going to get a whole lot off of the spool right now. Just enough to make this distance happened with a little extra, so maybe like right there, and then double it. Really don't need that much. Almost there. Went through that big loop. You guys have it easy. Some of these needles can get really tiny. Make sure I tie the tail, make sure everything stays put where it belongs. Not. And I'm just going to pick right back up where I left off. Oops. Okay, so it pulled right out. So I'm going to do that tie knot again. You have to tie both threads. If you don't tie both threads, then one of them is going to pull out. So every time you start and every time you finish, you have to do it both times. Let's see. I'm going to catch it under. No, I'm just going to do this. Do the same thing. All right. Back to what we were doing before. Caught. Okay. Follow the trail. So if you ever have a problem, follow the trail. That's going to be the number one way to solve your problem. Back where I started. All right, I'm going to speed up a little bit. 
You know, you guys have been watching for a while. I didn't intend to take this long, but you know, things happen. Problems arise. That's why we know how to fix them. It's coming, it's coming. All right, try not to pull too hard. I'm ready to turn the corner, and I'm almost ready for the next eventful thing to happen. So here we go. We're going to come right up to that marker needle. You can sew over it just a little bit if you want, but that's where you pause. You're not stopping, but you're going to take a pause. So, oops, that was a big mess. All right, so follow the trail. So it looks like it wrapped around that end of the needle. So let's pull that out. Let's see. Okay, it looks free, so I don't want to pull until I'm sure that it won't make a mess. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to tie it in a knot. So maybe I'll catch this little stitch right here and make a loop. And then go through that loop. I'm going to tie it one more time, so right under the loop again. And then I went through the middle of it just about pulling it up. So I'm going to make that knot. I'm going to take out my marker needles. So right now there are no needles left in here because I've sewn through and kept everything together. And there's a little opening here. Don't worry about the needle. It'll be fine. Be aware of where it's at so you don't poke your fingers. But you're going to turn this inside out. That's how this pillow gets made. So we are turning it just like a sock. Looks like a big ball of nothing. So you're going to use your fingers to poke out the corners. It's very gentle. You're going to see all the white stitches because I didn't use black thread. Use your fingers to pull and pinch. Get all those corners unfolded. You guys are going to look like professionals. And give yourself a little bit of forgiveness. Remember this some of the first time some of you have ever sewn anything before, so if it doesn't look great, it's okay. It's just a little corn bag. It's not like it's going to go on TV or anything. Okay, so now I have a little corn bag. So I have a little bag with a hole in it, and the needle's coming out of the hole. If it's not, then you know where to find it because it's on one of these edges. And your job at this point is to fill your bag. So I'm going to grab a funnel. This is going to be a little awkward on camera, but I'm going to show you how to do this. You're going to put one Dixie cup and shake it. Make sure that funnel gets all, all that stuff in there. And another half of another one. If you put too much in, then it can be really uncomfortable to use. So you don't want to overstuff. So one and a half Dixie cups is about what it should take. Shake, 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 shake. Okay, so when you're done, it should be about two-thirds of the way full. So if you made this into three sections, it should be full right up to here, and mine is. So now we have to finish off these, this edge. So in order to make it pretty, we're going to fold that little stuff in there. And you can do this one of two ways. If you want to do it hidden so that you can't see it, come see me. That's a little bit more tricky. For those of you who have never sewn before, we're going to do something called a whip stitch. And a whip stitch is all of coming in from the front, coming around the outside. So it's a loop over and over. So front to back, front to back, front to back the whole way. If you want to, if this is getting a little bit in your way and you're not quite sure where to put it, put a pin in it. That's what holds everything together. Just pin it closed so that it doesn't move on you. So whip stitch it the whole way up. You want to make sure you want to get to the other side of wherever your gap is. So my gap is right here. That's the end of it. So I've got to make sure I have enough thread to go all the way over there and past it just a little bit. Don't worry about the pin. You can always pull that out later. If you want to pull it out as you come by it, you can. So this whip stitch is going to be on the outside. And remember, you want to leave enough go over it just a little bit to make sure it's closed the whole way. Leave just enough to make a loop, so I'm going to go underneath one of those loops. And I'm going to find that loop again. Remember the goal doesn't have to be a pretty knot, it just has to be something that's not going to come undone. Right there. I'm going to catch that loop. Maybe I can catch it. Ah, it's just big enough. Okay. Tie it nice and tight. Make sure, whoops. See, did that. Oh, good, it tied. Okay. Whew. All right. Snip that. 
and then you have a nice corn bag. So, whoops, my kindergarten thing's going off. You probably seen that long before I noticed it. So that's all closed. My corn bag's ready to roll. That's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Remember, you can play this video, pause it if you need to, and you'll be able to figure things out. All right, guys, let's get started.